time God is good. I'm just going to share a, a few verses with you this morning that it really touched my heart this morning as I heard this, and I thought, oh, I got to share that. And it's in Acts, the first chapter, beginning with verse 9. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Man of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. That's a promise. Isn't it wonderful to know that that same Jesus that went up that day when those disciples was watching him, that he's coming back again in the same way that he went up. It's wonderful to know that we have a Savior, a, a God that watches over us, a God that takes care of us, a God that blesses us, and a God that is with us at all times. And I'm so glad that we have Jesus in our heart and our life. He's given us several promises. And so sometimes when you get discouraged or down and out or it seems like life is overcoming, you just go to the Bible and look up those promises of God and that will lift you up. Write them down on a piece of paper. Memorize them. Quote them. Uh, it's wonderful to know the promises of God. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We especially want to remember Penny, Ezel, and Greg Ponder and the home going of their dad. He went to be with the Lord this morning at about 145. So we want to uh, especially remember them in our prayers. Penny told me this morning that she's been taking care of her dad for about 12 years. And so I'm sure she's going to start to go over there to see about him many times and realize he's not there. So let's especially remember him, I mean, not him, but the family. And let's still remember Roger and Gloria Bachelor. We believe in God is going to intervene in their behalf. Bob and Lene Beers, Mona Chester and Jana Chester, Barbara Edenfield, Martha Palmer Ezel that's recovering from surgery, Ronnie Ezel, Stella Fulgham, Lauren Harrell, Brian McLaughlin, Raylan Mills, John and Jean Murphy that Jean went home from rehab this week, Ronnie Petit, Joe Plant, Martha Ponder, Shirley Piles, Jamie and Laura Robertson, Jean and Nettie Sheffield, Marvin and Hazel Strode, George and Donna Ziegler, uh, Lauren Hare, uh, um, excuse me, I've already mentioned her. And we want to especially remember Shirley and Bobby Piles. Uh, Shirley is going through chemo, and it's really taking its toll on her. But we know that God is able uh, and to give her that strength that she needs and help her uh, during this hour of need. And you may want to just jot a little card of encouragement and send it to Shirley. Uh, she really needs encouragement. She really needs our prayers. So let's not forget that. You may have an unspoken request that you want to make known at this time by the uplifting of your hand. I'd like for us all to stand and honor the Lord this morning as we go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. What a beautiful day it is. Lord, it's a day that you could come back. There's some things that are secret. Only the Father knows that. But, Lord, we know, Lord, with the world in the condition that's in, that you could come back at any time. And, Lord, the most important thing is that we worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Uh, uh, Father, that we lift up your name, that we get everything else off of our mind, uh, Lord, and solely look to you while we are here to, together to worship you today. Lord, let us praise and adore you. Let us magnify you. Lord, if we thought you were coming back, before we left this church today, our minds would be solely on you. And Lord, that's where we want it to be anyway. We want to be thinking about you, praising you, magnifying you, lifting up your name, exalting you. And Lord, that's exactly what we need to do. And Lord, we do come to you in behalf of all of these needs, uh, Lord, that have been spoken or unspoken. God, you know the need of each and every one. And we do pray, God, for the Ponder family. God, that you would comfort them, console them, wrap them up in your arms of love. And Lord, we pray again for Brother Joe Plant. God, that you would continue to comfort him. And we pray, dear God, also uh, that you would reach down, Lord, um, and you would minister to Shirley and Bobby Piles. If ever anyone needed your touch, they need your touch today. I pray, God, that you would strengthen Shirley, that you 
you would lift her up, God, that you would help her uh, through this chemo. Maybe it's good for you, but at the same time, it's really hard on you. And I pray, God, that you would just reach down, Lord, and you would touch Shirley and Bobby today and their entire family. And we just ask you, God, again, Lord, to bless us in this service today. Lord, let it be a day, Lord, that we rejoice in you, that we praise God and we magnify you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And amen. Praise God. The Lord's good. We're glad you're in the Lord's house on a Sunday morning. Perfect day to be in the house of the Lord. Hope you got a made up mind. And Leslie Spangler is going to come and share a song that's just powerful in its message. And, and it is the gospel uh, calling us to make up our minds to serve the Lord. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. All the way. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. All the way. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. You can't turn me. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. All the way. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. All the way. You can't turn me. I'm going with Jesus all the way. Well, sometimes I got to fast and pray. Sometimes I got to steal away. Sometimes I got to cry out, help me, Lord. Well, I know if I hold my peace, the Lord will take care of me. I'm going with Jesus all the way. I'm going with Jesus all the way. I'm going with Jesus. All the way, you can't stop me, you can't turn me, I'm going with Jesus, all the way, well, I'm going with Jesus, all the way, I'm going with Jesus, all the way, you can't stop me, you can't turn me, I'm going with Jesus, all the way. Jesus. I'm going with 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 Jesus. All the way. You can't stop me. You can't turn me. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. You can't stop me. You can't Tawana Edwards is going to come at this time. She's got a message to share with us. She just says, here I am to worship. I've come to worship you, Lord. I've come to lift up my heart to you, Lord. I've come to spend some moments in your presence. You can be in a church building and not spend any moments in the presence of God. A lot of that has to do with us. We've got to have a heart because God's looking for heart worship, not just lips or hands worship. But here I am to worship. Quite a, quite a song, quite a message. Amen. to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glory is a heaven above. to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am. 
say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I never know how much it costs to see my sin. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me and i never know how much you to see my sin upon that cross i never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross we'll never know how much it costs to see our sins upon that cross. So here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to sound of his lovely name I'll ne'er understand why a savior would die for a man when you rose at its end his blessings begin oh what a friend when your heart is broken 
breaking, his heart is breaking in two. When you've gone your last mile, there's nowhere that you can run to. Oh, just run to the Father with open arms, he'll welcome you. He's a friend to rely on. He'll do what no other can do. Oh, what a friend this man called Jesus, a broken heart man. At the sound of his lovely name, I'll ne'er understand. Why a Savior would die for a man When your road's at its end His blessings begin Oh, what a friend When you're needing comfort He is a comfort to know He makes the load lighter He's peace to a lost, troubled soul. Oh, he's there when you need him. Just call and he'll hear your prayer. You won't have to look far. Just open your heart, Jesus cares. Oh, what a friend. This man called Jesus, a broken heart man, at the sound of his lovely name, I'll ne'er understand why a Savior would die for a man when your road's at its end, his blessings begin. Oh, what a friend that it's in his blessings begin. Oh, what a friend. Amen. There is a friend that left sick closer than a brother. And you need him. If you don't have him, he's your friend. His name is Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, praise the Lord. When you think about the Lord and His goodness, you think about Him dying on the cross, you think about how close He is to be our friend, and you think about just going on for Jesus. Well, the way that we respond to that is just uh, just to believe God for great things. And Vanessa is going to come at this time and share a song called, I Raise a Hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I raise a hallelujah, with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Feel you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. 
You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. To fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. a hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. We need to raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I was just thinking about this song, and I was thinking about this verse where it talks about um, a raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. What does that really mean? The mystery means we don't know what's going to happen, right? It's a mystery. We can raise a hallelujah because we know he's on our side. And we know he hears our prayers. And we may not understand or know what's going to happen in our future. We know what we're praying for, what we're asking the Lord to do for us and for our families. In the midst of that, we can raise a hallelujah. Why? Because he's faithful. He's, he's been faithful, faithful in the past, has yeah. he not? He has been faithful. And he remains faithful. And will yes. always be faithful. Yes. He will be the friend that we can count on. Just as Brother Zane sang a while ago. He is a friend we can count on. Yes. At all times. So we can declare yes. and raise a hallelujah to the one who makes the difference. Hallelujah. The one who can answer yes. our prayers yes. and turn things around for That's us. Right. Even when it don't look like it. That's right. We can raise a hallelujah yes. Amen. knowing he's in control. Yes. Amen. And all it takes is one touch. One dispatch of an angel. Yes. Go. 
All he has to say is go. Or say the word and it's done. Yes. That's just who he is. Yes. That's just who he is. He loves us that much. Yes, he does. He loves us that much. Yes, he does. That we can raise a hallelujah through our hallelujah. tears. Absolutely. Through our yes. sorrow. Through our hurt and our pain. He's our healer. He's our provider. Yes. He's all those things we need. Yes, he is. He's always been a provider. He's always been our healer. Nothing changes. He never changes. Never. Our circumstances change. Things don't always look good sometimes. Yes. But he never changes. He's the one that can make the difference. Yes. We can raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, praise team. That was excellent, Susan. And the Lord is good. God's good all the time. And we're glad he is. Thank the Lord. Even in the tough times, the Lord cares for us. He is concerned about us. And he is with us in all of the difficulty. Praise the Lord. Amen. You ever feel hopeless in life? You ever feel like that it's just hopeless? You're Doing all you can, praying, believing the Lord as well as you can. I'm not sure how well any of us understands what faith is or altogether how it works. But at the same time, the reason we're in the house of the Lord is by faith. If you're watching this, I'm assuming it's by faith. Uh, we, we all have those times when things just look hopeless to us. What do you do in those times? Do you complain and grumble? Do you just feel like giving up, and do you give up, and you just stop trying, you stop believing? I think some people do that sometimes. That's so sad. What do you do when things look hopeless? That's what we're going to preach on this morning, and we're glad you are with us. And we're going to be looking at Micah, the Old Testament prophet Micah, the book that he wrote. He was the one who prophesied that out of you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, that's where the Messiah would be born. And uh, he's noted for that. But some things we might not know about Micah is the society he, lives, he lived in was much like our society today when it seems like sometimes evil seems to win. That evil seems to be much stronger and the things that are right in God's sight appear to be diminished a lot. And yet at the same time, Micah, who lived in that environment, shows us exactly what to do when things look hopeless. Can we stand together for the reading of a verse of Scripture in two different versions? This is Micah chapter 7, verse 8, in the New King James Version. And he's like talking to his enemies. Do not rejoice over me, my enemies. When I fall, I will rise. He didn't say if there. He said when I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, and I don't see which way to go. I'm not sure the direction I should take. Sometimes not even how to pray maybe. He said when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Now this is the New Living Translation. Don't gloat over me, my enemies, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. We're going to look at what to do when things look hopeless. I'm excited about this message. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace toward us. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in the Lord's house. Thank you, God, for giving us wisdom in the tough times of our lives and in the most difficult circumstances of our lives. And Lord, I thank you that in, in our church, as well as probably every church, uh, Lord, who looks to you and looks to Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, Lord, that there are people there who have been through hopeless times. And they've been through the tough times. And they've been through the seasons where nothing seemed to be going right and everything was a struggle and yet they persevered just like Micah said he would even though the circumstances he lived in were very 
difficult, and oppressive in many ways. And we thank you, God, for the Word of God. And Lord, for those times that we feel hopeless, within ourselves, we do not rise. Within ourselves, we're not overcomers. But we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible says, and by the word of our testimony. And we thank you, Lord, that by the grace of God, we too, like Micah, even in the times where we fail or we fall, yet we're going to rise again by faith and believe you for greater things even. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and you may be seated. When Micah was moved on by the Spirit of God to write this, he was going through a very difficult season in his life. This was not just for a moment or for a week or for a month or even maybe for a year. This was a whole season of difficulties. He had people who didn't like his message and they didn't like him, which was not unusual. Uh, usually administrations don't like to hear the truth no matter where they are or which nation they're in. And this was no different. Um, and, and this was also a season where, where, where it's easy to be discouraged. And I would think that Michael was somewhat discouraged. And, and he was pressing, this circumstances were pressing down on him. And the real issue for Michael was this, that the society, the society which he had lived in had totally rejected God and the ways of God and the word of God and they had gone their own way. Is that not how the United States of America looks today? It looks that way to me. We could say like Isaiah said of his own people. Oh, we like sheep. We've all gone astray. We've each turned to our own way. We've made up our own mind and we live the way we want to live. And we, we just do things as though we're going to be here eternally and that there's nothing to face concerning the future. That's how a lot of people live. And others around him may have also lost hope when they considered the moral decay and the spiritual decline of that nation uh, that Micah was in. And what somebody said like this, that, that Micah saw a society rotting all around him. Is that how it looks to you sometimes? And, and what I read about the situation there was that rulers demanded gifts not unusual not first not the last greed is part of it and that's one reason that some people run for office that's not nice to say that it's not kind but at the same time it's what's in it for me and we see that way too often even in America in Micah's time judges accepted bribes that is a justice such as it was was, was for sale if you had the money and you had the connections, you got away with it. Much like our world today sometimes, I think. And, the, and corruption was universal, where people sold out their nation, much like they do have been doing for decades. Uh, it was a sad situation when Micah looked around him. As a matter of fact, it was a gloomy and very depressing circumstance. Don't float over me, my enemies, Micah said. If I fall, and he knew it was not going to be easy. He knew it was, was challenging. Quickly as I can from the Life Application Study Bible, and this is what it says about Micah in this passage or this verse, that Micah could not find an honest person anywhere in the land even today, fair-mindedness, that is, uprightness, honesty, integrity are difficult to find. It goes on to say, society rationalizes, and I would even say legalizes sin. And even believers sometimes compromise at their Christian principles in order to do whatever they want or to yield to the pressure they are put under. And it's easy to convince ourselves that we deserve a few breaks. And especially when everyone else is doing it. And it closes, the, the Life Application Study Bible closes with this. 
But the standards for honesty come from God, not society, or not even from the laws that are passed in the land. We are to be honest because God is truth, and we are to be like him. That's from the Life Application Study Bible, an excellent study Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. And so Micah, if you look at verse 1 in Micah 7, this is today's English version, and this is how it's worded. It's hopeless. I'm like a hungry person who finds no fruit left on the trees and no grapes on the vines. All the grapes and all the tasty figs have been picked. He's looking for something and it's not there. He's searching for something and he cannot find it. That's a picture of our world today too often. It is easy to lose hope in a fallen world. It happened to Elijah. If you, that's you that, or, or me. That, we're not the first people. Elijah said to God after he was, went through this great victory and then this horrific, manic, deep depression. By the way, Sidney Miller's uh, going to be a doctor of, of uh, not psychology, it's, is it? Anyway, see, she, he, she could have helped him. So anyway, just threw that in there. I don't think that helped that at all, but I just threw that in there. But Elijah didn't have Sidney Miller to talk to, or now Sidney Smith. And sometimes we don't have anybody to talk to. And everywhere Micah looked, there's trouble and adversity and there's stress. And, and when you live in the world we're living in, if you're not careful, this world will discourage you from serving the Lord. It will discourage you from, from walking with the Lord. Sometimes you may feel like you're the only one who walks with the Lord. We always have people who come to church. Sometimes they're the only ones in their whole family that, came, that, come, that come to church. When I came here over 27 years ago, Lana Snowden was the only person in her family who came to church. And the next week, Susan came and dedicated her life to God. They've been coming ever since, and they're still here today. And as a result of that, they've got some people in heaven because of their faithfulness to God. I believe Rory is in heaven and Alan. And I believe that, that uh, yeah, all, this whole family uh, is in heaven. Uh, the Fountains and, and, and Tom and Louise, and this list goes on. It's because somebody kept going even when there was no encouragement. Somebody kept going even when it didn't look like nothing good was ever going to take place. But things do tend to turn around sometime, and Micah knew that. And when we think about the difficulty of life, Jesus said this about, when, especially when you're going through difficulty, I apply this next teaching from him uh, about that. You have to guard your life, guard your heart. If you're going through a time of testing, when life is difficult, you're discouraged, nothing really looks like it's any reason to be encouraged. Jesus told us where the problems were. Three areas of your life and my life you have to watch. If you don't, they drag you away from the Lord. This is first the New King James Version, then the Contemporary English Version. <coughs> Excuse me, this is actually the writing of John the Apostle. And, and, and he's quoting, I think Jesus said this, For all that is in the world, that is the lust of the flesh, Excuse me, yeah, the lust of the flesh, which not doesn't mean just sexual, it's their lust that deals with the many areas that destroy people. The lust of the eyes, you know, what your flesh likes, what your physical body likes, and what you see that you like. Eve said in the Garden of Eden that the Bible says that when she saw the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, that it looked good to her. She liked what she saw. And then the pride of life, those three things, they will destroy you spiritually. And the Bible says here, those are not of the, fa of the Father, but those are what you have in the world. That's why the world has gone wrong. That's why the world is going in the wrong direction. And if you don't watch these, I don't watch these, we will go in the wrong direction. 
Now then, put that verse in English, contemporary English version. Our foolish pride comes from this world, and so do our selfish desires. You self-centered, you look after number one? Our selfish desires and our desire to have everything we see. None of this comes from the Father. Verse 17, the world and the desires it causes are disappearing. They look permanent to me. They're not. We think the world's going to be here forever, but it won't be. We thought maybe the glaciers were going to be here forever, but some of them melt. I'm not sure how accurate it's reported, but they do melt. It's all passing away, and there's nothing we can really do about that. What we can do is watch our hearts and watch our lives and go in the right direction while this continues to take place all around us. The people who built the Tower, the, the tower of Babel had a grand idea. We'll just... Build our own way into heaven. And it fell apart. The world and the desires it causes are disappearing. But if we obey God, got that? If we obey God, ready? You want to live eternally? You want to have eternal life? You want to go and be with the Lord when Jesus comes back? You want to be absent from the body and present with the Lord in this life when you die? This is what it's going to take. If we obey God, we will live forever. That's what that version says. In the word of God, I believe it's true. Amen. That's where the priorities ought to lie. That's what God is calling us to. I've said this before. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want Crystal to preach. And I'm concerned that Anna Ray is going to preach. It's not an easy life. You do stuff that looks stupid when you're a preacher. I've seen people kneeling and preaching and sitting and preaching, running and preaching. I always thought, that was not me. I was cool and collected. I've gotten over it after a few rodeos of that. But it's not up to me. It's not up to you. If you want to go and be with the Lord forever. Spend time with the Lord while you're here in this life. That was on a church sign. Uh, that whoever, whoever you live for today is who you're going to be living with in eternity. Whether it's the Lord or the devil. The world we're in now is deceitful. It's like sin is deceitful. The apostle Paul wrote, sin deceived me. Promise something great. It ended up being destructive in my life. A guy who called himself the worst alcoholic in Cook County was Roy Jones. He was a hopeless alcoholic, we might say drunk. He's told me stories. He got saved, but he told me stories. He said some. One night he was so drunk he couldn't get home and he just covered himself with leaves on the side of the road. But when he got saved, he quit all that, just like that. I mean, if I could snap my fingers as loud as some people, you'd hear it. But he got saved and he, he changed him just like that. And he would get up and say, the devil is a wonderful artist, a great artist. He can paint you a picture, but it's all basically a lie that's how the world is the world with its fallen spiritual and moral condition it offers a false hope and a false message of happiness through selfishness have it your way a hamburger place advertised grab all the gusto you can the beer company advertised I've seen what happens when people do those things sometimes. It's not wrong to have a hamburger your way. No pink if it's me, okay? My brother-in-law told me one time that he was going to, I think, a VA hospital to visit somebody. So he went into this place where all these lung cancer 
patients were that had been in the military, and it had a sign on the wall, Welcome to Marlboro Country. They don't show you that part sometimes. That's how the world is. The result of the world is this. It ends in evil and sorrow and division. That's what we see in our nation. That's where the real problem is. It's the sinfulness of people, the sinful nature that's not corrected and it's not checked. And sin is like a cancer. Either you get the victory over it or it gets the victory over you and it'll destroy you spiritually. You have to fight the good fight of faith, whether you feel like it or whether you don't. And Michael saw, Michael saw a lot more than this present world. What do you do when things look hopeless? Excuse me. Micah saw that, that God was still God even in the dark and hopeless times that we probably all face. You know, I read verse 8 to begin with. That was the text. Do not gloat over me, my enemies, for though I fall, I will rise again, and though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Well, let's look at the verse just before that. Therefore, in the New King James Version, therefore I will, what? Look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Now, when you look at circumstances, you, you're going to find whatever it is you're looking for. I, like a lot of people, I've been to a lot of different churches. I've preached in a lot of different churches. I've sung in a lot of different churches. I've played in a lot of different churches. All of that. Uh, you know, but when I go there, I go there to worship God. That's why I go there. I go there to worship God. I've already made up my mind. I'm going to worship God no matter who's here. No matter, no matter which songs they sing. No matter who sings them. No matter who's preaching. No matter who's teaching. I've made up, I'm going to worship God. That's what you have to do. And that's kind of what Michael was saying. He said, he said in verse 7, I'm going to look to the Lord. Are you able to look to God when things get discouraging? You have to be very careful. You'll find what you're looking for. If you want to look and see everything that's wrong, you'll see it, I'll see it, we can all see it. Stuff I see now that I used to didn't see. It's just me personally, I don't like plastic baseboard. And so... We had a discussion about that, whether to put down plastic baseboard, which you don't have to keep painting. If it comes apart loose, you have to stick it back up sometimes, or at least what I've seen. You don't have to paint it. You don't, it doesn't get nicked or beat up. Or we could put in the wood, which then has to be bought the boards. Then they have to be cut to perfection. Then they have to be nailed where they go. Then they have to be painted. I'm thinking that was 6000 for the Life Center. I made a, a decision that I thought we should do that, and, and, the, and, the, and the building committee went along with me. I'm so glad that I did that, because now you know what I do when I go to a Life Center? I shouldn't have never come up with that, because first thing I do is look at the baseboard. They put up a $5 million building and a 20-cent baseboard. Something's wrong with that picture, okay? I'm just telling you. If you're listening and you're thinking about building one, now you know how I feel about it. Anyway, so you look, you, you see what you're looking for. What you have to be careful is this. When you start seeing only what's wrong, you have to stop yourself because that's not a clear picture. There's a lot of things that are right even when things look like they're going wrong. God's still on the throne. Jesus is still returning. And the good news is the Lord still saves the lost and he still changes lives and he still heals broken hearts. It's a process, it's a journey, it's a trip. It's not easy sometimes, but God is able. We have some in our church who can say that, amen. Michael could see the sad condition of his people. And so in verse 8 he writes in today's English version, our enemies have no reason to gloat over us. We have fallen morally and spiritually. We have fallen, but we will rise again. We are in darkness now, but the Lord will give us light. The Bible says that God gives songs in the night. I believe that God will give us songs in the dark times of our lives. 
when things don't look up. I believe that God is a God who can give us a song at the right time in just the right way with just the right words. It may not fix everything, but it'll make a difference in your life because you feel like God has spoken to you right where you are. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Sermon's something preachers get excited about. Nobody else, but they do. It looked hopeless when you when Michael looked around him. Nothing good's gonna happen. This is the way it's always going to be. No, it's not. Micah saw a better day ahead. It's easy to give up and easy to give in to discouragement. But that's not God's way, and that's not the easiest way, and that's not the best way. If I had a nickel for every time I preached when I was discouraged, I'd have a lot of nickels. But what if you don't feel like preaching? And I don't sometimes. What if God said, preach anyway? Now get up and preach. Get up, feet. We're going. We're going to dress up and we're going to get there and we're going to raise our hands. And where I'm going to, if nobody else wants to smile in the praise team, I'll smile for all of us. Praise God. Somebody in the group. It's got to have a smile on their face and tell the world it's worth serving the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Vinegar salesman never won too many flies. Might as well try the sugar for a while. Michael looked to God and he didn't give up in despair. That's the solution. You'll be happy to know I'm on page 6 or 12. Brenda says that does not help. Brother Terry Cruz, who I love greatly, the general superintendent of the Congregational Holiness Church, up in age, I'm in my 20s. He played a violin, and his wife played piano. And it was like, if I could imagine a primitive... Baptist Church having a piano and a violin in it would have sounded like that. But I love them dearly. They let, they let Brenda and me stay at their house when we went to camp meeting because they knew we had a long way to come from Douglas. But what I liked about Brother Cruz, never gave up. He said one time, here he was, the leader of the congregation of holding this church and an airport in, I think he said, in Chicago, and he didn't even have enough money to buy a hamburger. Amen. Not time to give up. This is the message Bible of Micah 7:7. 7, 7. But me, remember Joshua saying in, in Joshua 24, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I was talking to Karen last Sunday, our piano player. I said, you know how many preachers, children won't even darken the doors of a church? I always thought this. You know, if you know, if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, then where is he gaining that? I paraphrase that to say if, if a preacher wins the world and loses his family, and some have done that, and I'm sorry to say that, that uh, that part's painful to those people. I know some of them. I've talked to some of them. I've tried to reach their children for them before. I told Karen last Sunday about what she, had, she and Gary had done well. I said, you can't keep your children out of church and your grandchildren out of church. They will not stay out of church. Somebody's done something right somewhere if you can do that. You're not the only one. My family, Tim, Crystal, and everybody, they love church. That's good. And I'm sympathetic to those whose children don't. But it can be done. Micah 7, 7, message Bible. But, as, but me, I'm not giving up. I'm sticking around to see what God will do. I'm waiting for God to make things right. I'm counting on God to listen to me. And he's in the middle of a society that is ungodly, is sold out to sin and ungodliness away from God, opposing God every single day. 
not popular to be a Christian. Might be the only thing going in heaven these days. Living for the Lord is what works in eternity and it'll work on earth. Living for the devil, it might work for a season on earth, but where do you get to eternity? And you talk about the heat, you haven't been there yet. And here's the, here's the difference. It all depends on what you do. It's who you look to, what you look for. That's in, in hopeless times, you've got to watch those things. It, it is who you look to and what you're looking for. Who you're looking to. Micah 7, 7, the verse we started. Therefore I will look to the Lord, the Lord God Jehovah. That's what that word means. It might be in the NIV or one other version that God of heaven's armies. Therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Here it is in the contemporary English version. But I trust the Lord. Do you trust the Lord in good times? And do you trust the Lord in the tough times and the bad times? And the times where nothing's going right? You have to trust the Lord in all these times. You, you can grow in, you have to grow in grace to do that. And it's not pleasant and it's not easy, but everybody who's walked with the Lord for any length of time has done that, so it can be done. You can do it and I can do it. But I trust the Lord God to save me and I will wait for Him to answer my prayer. Good news. For Micah, things were not going to be always like they were. And by faith, I'm just believing in your circumstances. If you're going through a time of hopelessness and despair, that things are not always going to be as they are. The Life Application Bible said that God promised to lead the people out of the darkness of sin and into his light. Then the people would praise him for his faithfulness. Nest. God alone is perfectly faithful. Life application study Bible. What do you do when you feel overwhelmed? I don't think it's helpful for me to read Bible commentary, but it just speaks to my heart. Maybe it's for me. Bear with me. A Bible you never heard of. Life essential study Bible. I wouldn't recognize it if I saw it, but this is what I found. Micah felt alone. In his walk with God, do you feel that way? Have you ever felt that way that you're all by yourself? I felt that way many times. And my first pastor, Brother Coleman Griffiths, used to say sometimes it felt like to him both God and the devil had left him. I probably felt that way a few times. All you do is keep going. You'll be okay. Don't give up. Keep looking up. Keep going in the right direction. You'll be fine. He said he felt that way, but the Lord had not left him, and the Lord has not left me, and the Lord will, has not left you if you're a child of God now. And then that study Bible goes on to say, God, Micah felt alone in his walk with God, though there were certainly others who shared his spiritual conviction, convictions, such as Isaiah in his same time. But the vast majority of people had forsaken the Lord. And in that sense, in Micah's area in Micah's day it seemed to him he was a lone voice like Elijah thought he was the only one but God said I've got 7,000 more besides 7,000 more prophets besides you I think that's what I understood it to mean the life, the life essential study Bible closes with this but in the midst of the sadness that gripped his soul he kept trusting God and praying for his people. What can you do when you feel all alone? You can do like Micah. I can do like Micah. Micah spoke by faith to his trouble. That, that would help. Learn a Bible verse. Quote it when it applies to your situation. This is Micah 7, 8, New Century Version. Enemy, don't laugh at me. I have fallen, but I will get up again. I sit in the shadow of trouble now, 
but the Lord will be a light for me. Amen. This is, God, I know I need to wrap this up probably, but I'm not sure I will. Micah 7, 7 Amplified Bible. But as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in him I will keep watch. I will wait with hope and expectancy for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You know, if God will hear you, you don't have to fight the battle. God will fight the battle. If God will hear you, things can change instantly. If God will hear you, he can move your mountain and make a way through your uncrossable river. If God will hear you, you can touch heaven and you can change what's on earth. If God will hear you, even if he doesn't change other things, he can do a greater work in your heart and in my heart. We come out of it with a greater faith than when we went in it, able to keep going and believe God for greater. <clears throat> Sometimes preachers have too much fun. Micah was confident in the Lord's faithfulness. My God will hear me. Well, if Micah could have that, faith, that confidence in God, so can we have that confidence in the Lord. You remember the Apostle Paul? He had come to the end of his life and he knew it. Oh, he wasn't going to be surrounded by his family and friends at a hospital or a home. He was going to be placed on a chop block. They didn't have guillotines yet. And his head was going to be cut off, just like John the Baptist. Paul had raised somebody from the dead, preached landslide revivals. Just won huge numbers of people to the Lord. God used him to write more of the New Testament than anybody else. And it contains all kinds of things about what you should live, how you should live and conduct your life, about the coming of the Lord, about what your resurrected body would be like, my resurrected body would be like. Times imprisoned, at times beaten, at times shipwrecked in a, in, a, in a shipwreck for a day and a night, I believe. He's a man that could pray, and God heard his prayer. You know, God even heard his prayer when he was going through a tough time. He described it as a painful situation in his life. He called it his thorn in the flesh that the Lord has sent a messenger, messenger of Satan to buffet me. And I prayed for God to move this thorn in the flesh three different seasons. And the Lord told me he was not going to move it, but he would give me the grace to keep going. And so that's what he did. What do you do when your prayer didn't get answered the way you wanted it answered? He really wanted his prayer answered, but, and God answered it, but he just didn't get the answer he was praying to get. But he comes to the end of his life just before he is put to death. Martyred is the fancy word, put to death for the cause of Jesus Christ, for the gospel of Christ. So he's writing to a young pastor named Timothy, and this is what he says to him and writes to him in the New King James Version. 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, or in the King James Version, henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, of right standing with God, which the Lord, the righteous judge, 
will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who loved have loved his appearing see he Paul knew that God was faithful Micah also just like Paul also knew that God was faithful as our musicians come Micah knew just like Job did he had a redeemer And Micah points to the need of a Savior. Someone who would bear witness. Someone who would show us how to please God with our lives. This one was not known until the day he walked up to the banks of the Jordan River. John the Baptist was there and he looked in the distance and he saw his cousin Jesus, six months younger than John was. And he saw this cousin of his coming. I've got some cousins, I'm going to tell you right away, I know right off the bat, they are not the Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the world. Sadly, they know that about me too. And but John saw his cousin coming toward him as Jesus. And he says, well, he didn't say, well, here's my cousin Jesus. He said, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When things look hopeless, I'm going to believe anyway that they're not hopeless. When things look discouraging, I'm going to believe that God will still hear from heaven and that God is still able to make a way for us. Might not look like there's a way right now, but you see, you, you and I are looking at it from earth. God sees it in a much different perspective, and the Lord is able to help you, to help me, to help us all just like he helped Micah. And he brought Micah through, and he brought the Apostle Paul through. He can bring you through. Let's stand together, if you will. Father God, thank you for your grace toward us. Thank you for a great day in the Lord's house. Thank you for a word from heaven that is life-changing. It's the gift of God that we're so favored to be able to be in a nation where the gospel is proclaimed or hopefully without fear of retaliation. And thank you, God, for your grace toward us. Lord, if there's someone here, maybe more than one someone here, maybe there's someone or more than someone who will be watching this, who's watching this now or will be watching it later. God, would you be that friend to them if, they're that person who just thinks everything is absolutely hopeless, that it's never going to get any better, that it's never going to change. Micah could have had that attitude so easily in his circumstances, but instead he did what was right when he was going through a hopeless time. He looked up and he kept his eyes upon you, Lord, and he came out all right. I don't think it was easy. I don't know how long it took, years, decades. I don't know how long it took. But Micah told the truth. And it happened as he expected that it would. And so why can that not happen for us if we will lift up our eyes, look to you in faith, put our hope and trust in you, even if we walk to a time of what looks like darkness, maybe spiritual darkness or other types of darkness. Even then, Lord, you will be our light and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you like to pray around the altar? God bless you. And also, God bless everyone for being here. Pray you would have a blessed rest of this week in Jesus' name. Let's remember the uh, Claude Ponder family, Penny Ezel and Greg Ponder, their whole family, that God would be with them. And God bless you for being here. See you, Lord willing, next Sunday at 11.